I'm Master Sergeant Jessica Pergamore. And I'm Technical Sergeant Jenny Bowling. And we are with the California Air National Guard in Northern California, the 195th Wing. And today we're going to talk to you about your uh, preparation and experience for the Military Entrance Processing Station in order to qualify and join the California Air National Guard. We are gonna go over the documentation that you need to bring, uh, transportation and or hotel, uh, dress code and conduct, tattoos and body piercings, uh, medical examination, and the forms. And then of course, if there's any questions, you can give your recruiter a call at the end. I'm gonna talk to you about your documentation. So there's a couple things that you absolutely have to have with you the day of MEPS. So you need a driver's license or a photo ID. So driver's license or regular ID or passport works. Do not bring a student ID. You don't you bring a student ID. That would yes. not work. Um, along with your photo ID, you also need your social security card. And then you need the form called the uh, examination form 680. Now this form uh, is either going to be provided to you by one of us in person, we'll hand it to you and say take this to MAPS with you and we'll sign it and you'll sign it, or we'll sign it and we'll email it to you and you'll know exactly where to sign from highlighted portions on it, so then you'll print it out at home and take it with you, just whatever, um, whatever process we're giving to you, just make sure that you bring that form to MAPS with you as well. All right, for transportation, so ahead of time, we've already provided you the address to MAPS or the address to the hotel if you are spending the night. Most of our applicants are going to be driving in the morning to go to MAPS. Um, arrival time is 5.45 a.m. and um, the doors close promptly at 6 a.m. So make sure you get there early. Um, Sorry, Pergamore is gonna go a little bit about like the area and where you're parking um, and the best practice for that. Yeah, the farmer's market garage is the farmer's, it, that's the garage that we use for the Sacramento maps. If you're going to the San Jose maps, we don't usually send people to San Jose, but if we do, the parking is actually in the, in the facility. But for Sacramento, it's about a five to 10 minute walk from the farmer's market garage to the actual uh, MEPS site. So make sure that you plan for that and plan for uh, about $5 for parking the whole day. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind when you do arrive at MEPS is uh, you're going to be greeted by someone outside. They're going to have probably a line forming, and so everybody will have their folders with them or their documentation with them, and they'll f put you in a formation. And this is going to be like kind of the first experience where it's like, whoa, um, my might be joining the military because the army sergeant that comes out is going to give you some very strict instructions for the day and expect you to say yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am or no ma'am. And then when you walk into the MEPS, they'll direct you to the Air Force office. They'll say, what branch are you joining? And you'll say Air Force, so go to the Air Force office. There's gonna be a lot of things moving and shaking at MEPS, so people are gonna be shipping out to basic training, people are going to be swearing into the, the, the delayed entrance program, and then also some people are gonna be picking their jobs. You're not doing any of that. Uh, we're gonna guide you through all that stuff as your recruiters. All you're doing at MEPS is doing the medical exam. So in case there's some confusion or you're like, whoa, what am I doing here? You're just there for the medical exam and some fingerprints. Yes, and make sure to go to the Air Force office, uh, Air National Guard, we're all under one blanket, because I'll have each of you go in the morning to your assigned uh, military branch. Yes. Um, the next thing we're gonna go over is the dress code and conduct while at MEPS. Really important, um, think of this as a job interview. So I usually recommend to my applicants to wear business casual. You don't have to get like full suit and tie, but definitely um, what would be the appropriate attire for you to wear to a job interview. Um, important things to know not to wear, um, no sleeveless attire, so no tank tops of any kind. Um, undergarments and the proper undergarments are really important to wear because you are getting a medical examination. So uh, for females, uh, no drink strings, crotchless, or latex underwear. Um, even though sports bras are okay, we don't recommend them. We recommend you wearing a regular bra. Um, for men, wear uh, boxer briefs or briefs only, and also no compression shorts. Um, in general, also for footwear, don't wear sandals or flip-flops. Um, you must wear shoes, and you have to have socks. 
For headgear, there is none of any kind, so no hats, bandanas, wraps, or anything like that. Um, and again, the back with the shirts, make sure there's no bare midriff showing or anything that seems inappropriate. Um, and then no transparent shirts as well. So anything that can be um, like an undergarment such as a white t-shirt, not to wear that. Um, make sure there is no obscene um, or profanity on your shirt and no um, political agenda as well. So just be very neutral. And again, back to the conduct. Um, when you're there, be courteous and respectful at all times. Uh, best practice to say yes sir, yes ma'am, no sir, no ma'am. Um, other important things, if you're of age, drink, no alcoholic beverages of any kind, and if you're not of age, none ever. Um, don't bring your cell phone in with you, and no weapons. Yeah, it's hard to go without your cell phone all day, so just maybe bring reading material. They're going to have a TV going, and they'll have board games and things to keep you occupied, but um, yeah, just keep your phone in your car if you can. Um, on the weapons, it's important, I'm going to point out, make sure, uh, this is including like pocket knives, pen knives, uh, little cans of mace, and I say this because a lot of people have them like just with daily use in their pockets or on their keychains, so just make sure you don't have those because they're kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Um, there's obvious things like knives and guns you don't bring in with you, but um, not to see all sorts of crazy things. Okay, I'm going to talk about tattoos and body piercings. Uh, we've already reviewed your tattoos at this point. If there's some secret hidden tattoo that you didn't tell your recruiter about, it'd be good to know because um, we do screen you for eligible tattoos. Some, some tattoos um, are considered to be obscene um, or have racial, ethnic, or religious discrimination on them. So make sure that you re re review that with us before you go to MEPS. Uh, also, you need to take out all of your body piercings. So. Uh, Earrings, you know, everything from head to toe comes out. You can't, women can wear earrings to maps, but I would recommend not wearing any jewelry. I wouldn't even take my wedding ring there just because you have to remove jewelry anyways and you might lose it. So we would hate for that to happen while you're there. And absolutely no earrings for men are authorized. Now we're going to talk about the biggest, biggest, biggest portion of the day, which is your medical exam. I think I'll just start with my, my big course, caveat with yeah. this. Like, I think what's confusing about the medical exam is it feels like you're about to have an appointment with your doctor because um, you are going to see a physician and they are going to ask you questions about your medical history. But we've already done that with you. We've already gone over your medical history. So this isn't an opportunity to start presenting new information because that doctor is not there to write you a prescription, it's not there to diagnose you with anything or give you any kind of follow-up care. He's just there to qualify you or disqualify you. So make sure that whatever you told your recruiter is the same when you go to meds. Don't change your story there. Um, by all means, if you remember something that you forgot about, I mean, obviously you need to be honest, but you're going to waste your time and your recruiter's time if all of a sudden you have all these yes answers when you get there and you had no's with your recruiter. So just be very, very thorough and I'll have Sergeant Miller go into kind of what the details of that exam include. Okay, so it's important for you to know all the different physical exams that are going to happen to you. Um, they're going to, again, we went over the 2807 too, which is that whole um, medical background. They have another form that they have you do, which is very similar. It's a 2807-1. Uh, make sure you read all those questions thoroughly. They're pretty much the same exact questions on the form that you went over with your recruiter, but sometimes the wording is a bit different. So don't just like systematically start going through all the questions and answering them. Uh, make sure that you read them and you understand what they mean. Um, you're going to get your blood drawn, very important to know and understand that, and there will be a urinalysis test that's given as well. So to help you prepare for that, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Um, there is a certain time of the day where if you're not able to go or if you're shy or not able to perform uh, to give the test, you might have to come back another day. Um, don't worry if you can't do that. It's kind of, you know, I don't, most people have never gotten a urinalysis done before, and if they ever had with a job, you are going to be monitored. So sometimes that can be difficult for somebody to have someone watch them go. Not a big deal. You can come back and do it another day because there is a cutoff time where if you can't get it done, um, they'll send out all the tests. But yeah, just mentally prepare yourself for someone to watch you pee. Yes. <laughs> um, females, you are going to receive a, preg a pregnancy test as well. Um, and then they will conduct a breathalyzer. So again, make sure no alcohol 24 hours prior. 
Um, this is for anybody who, you know, even if you're allowed to drink. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about the eye exam okay. and the hearing test. So there's going to be a series of tests. Um, we're not really sure what order they're going to give you these tests in, um, but just make sure that you know you're paying attention to the instructions. I like to go by the rule of thumb of if you see a line forming, go to the shortest line because then you'll get done quicker um, rather than the longest line of, of the different exams. But eye exam that's going to include depth perception and uh, color blindness. So uh, there's no time limit on either one of these tests. You can take your time and look at the, the depth perception test to see if you can pass it. And then same for color vision. Definitely take your time with color vision um, because that's a huge one that can disqualify you from a lot of jobs if you're not, if you don't pass color vision. And then as well as uh, make sure that you bring your glasses with you if you wear glasses, if you, uh, contacts, make sure you bring your case and your solution with you so that you can do both um, your corrected and uncorrected uh, eye exam. For hearing test, you talked about the hearing test last time, so you, if you want to talk yes. about it. Yes, yeah. um, really important uh, to help prepare you for this, uh, for the best outcome. Make sure you don't wear headphones or listen to loud music 48 hours before. Um, also, don't use a pool, and make sure that your ears are clean thoroughly um, before that you have, you know, before you actually go up there to MEPS. And the reason that we have lots of people that unfortunately get temporarily disqualified because there's too much wax built up in their ear, and so the doctor can't see what they need to. So very important. Um, you will also get a height and weight check done as well. Um, you will get the flexibility and the motor skills test done. This is just to make sure that you are fit to uh, fight for any branch of the military. And then of course, if you've heard the dreaded duck walk, that will happen during that time as well. Yeah, they have you do all these weird motions like flexibility, I, I don't know, it's, yeah, motor skills and then different things that make you feel when you're all done with all those exams, um, at the very end, you will do a quick strength test in the Air Force Liaison Office that will be conducted by the liaisons. It's just equivalent to like a power clean at the gym just to see how much weight you can lift. Um, women, you will get a breast and pelvic exam, and men, you will get a hernia check. It's not a super invasive one. It's just a real quick check. That's why you have to wear the proper undergarments. And of course, there will be chaperones if there is a different gender doctor in there as well. So be rest assured with that. Yeah, stay patient with the staff. It is a really, really long day. Um, sometimes things come up, like we've had people go to MEPS and find out that they had a condition that they weren't even aware of. Uh, so don't be alarmed by that. If that does happen, just get as much information as you can from the medical staff so that we can help you navigate it and bring you back to getting qualified for, for the Air National Guard. Um, as always, just be patient, polite, and respectful. Um, if you're in a room by yourself and no one else is around and no one has came to get got, got you for 45 minutes, you're probably in the wrong place. So just stick with the herd and follow the instructions uh, from the staff. If you don't understand a question, make sure that you ask them to repeat what, what the instructions are or what they asked you. Yeah. And understand, uh, MAPS is an all-day process, so just anticipate being there all day. We don't know. You could be done at 12 o'clock, you could be done at 2. It really depends on... Um, you know, the amount of applicants are up there. It's not just the Air National Guard, it is the Air Force, it is the Navy, it is the Army and the Marines. Um, and every day they have people ship and the shippers always take priority. So just understand that there might be a lot of hurry up and wait on that. Um, with that as well, make sure you get a really good night's sleep prior mm -hmm. so that again, all the tests that you get done, uh, that you have the best outcome for them. Yeah, the way I can, I think the best way to describe the MEPS experience is, it's like the military DMV. Like there's a lot of people waiting. It takes a long time. The staff has done this dozens and dozens and hun probably hundreds of times, even though this is your first and last time there. Um, so just be patient um, with the whole process of the day. And I, I would say just talk to people and make friends and make small talk and get to know all the other people that are joining various branches. Um, what else? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any very specific questions, please reach out to your recruiters or either one, you know, for being either one of us yeah. uh, for any additional uh, questions and answers, and we can go over that. But yeah, we'll do a follow up with you, either whether it's in person or on the phone. You'll get an email from us with lots of information to prepare you. Uh, watch this video once. 
twice, three times if you need a refresher, and good luck. We hope to see you in uh, this uniform in the California Air National Guard in the very near future. Sergeant Jessica Prigmore with the California. Oh, like, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me go back. Uh, how do I say this? Hi. Um, hang on. Introduction to the name first, and then. Yeah, we can say we are part of Okay, part. yeah. Hi, I'm Master Sergeant Jessica Prigmore. And I'm Technical Sergeant Jenny Bowling. And we are uh, your California Air National Guard recruiting team. 